So I am Jean-Marc Grasset from um, IFP New Energy. It's a French public institute, institute that uh, makes some research on uh, energy, environment, and things like that. So I want to thank the committee to allow me to speak about my experience about uh, using boost libraries and uh, boost proto, and I will try to to show how uh, we are at in a use of this model to, to design a domain-specific Mendel language for um, low, lowest order variation method. It's a mathematical method to solve a partial derivative equation. So the history starts four years ago. So four years ago, I was reading books like uh, Metaprogramming, looking at uh, uh, spirit, things like that, on, um, in, at Uppsala conference. Uh, I met uh, Dave Avant, and uh, I talked with him about uh, my, uh, my project to write uh, a language for mathematician to help us, in my, help me in my work to implement uh, efficient software for industry. And uh, I was looking for a framework about um, an uh, expression template, things like that. And he told me, why don't you look at uh, Proto? I said, I not Proto. And I, I came back to France, and I started reading Proto. But uh, I have a teacher from time ago uh, uh, t uh, telling us that when you read a course, uh, you, can, you can't think that you understand the course once you can read twice and understand the same thing. <laughs> and, uh, I start reading Proto once, and a second time, uh, I, I, I understand something, uh, so, something else. So I read it uh, a third time, and I start to to write my own expression template framework because I think it was it's quite simple and uh, I better write it by myself instead of understanding the proto. And I, I go on uh, creating my domain specific language. But in fact, we have a very specific domain, mathematical domain, very complicated. And I start to have some complex things to solve. <coughs> and as I didn't solve them, I read the proto-tutorial, and I said, hey, they have solved this problem. Then the second problem, oh, they have solved this problem. <laughs> so I decided to read each night proto, and as, 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 uh, 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 till I can understand the same thing twice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I have uh, uh, already a uh, big code written in my own framework. I decided that maybe uh, I should invest in Proto and rewrite my framework with Proto. So I will try to, to explain the benefit of using Proto to design uh, uh, a language. So I, I won't focus on the specific domain because it's a quite complicated domain, uh, mathematical. But, uh, uh, I just want to show how uh, you can design a very complex language for a specific domain using generic things from Proto. So IFP, uh, it's a, a public laboratory working on technology for an energy environment, for reservoir and basin modeling, for oil petroleum, for CO2 storage and um, combustion engine modeling. So it's a work with uh, Christophe Quillen from uh, a French laboratory uh, using uh, metaprogramming um, uh, language. So uh, I will uh, first uh, explain you the motivation of uh, the work, the context, the state of art, and I will quickly um, uh, try to explain you the, the, the mathematical background just to understand the same, the the semantic of uh, the language and the sense of the uh, expression. <coughs> so I won't focus on it uh, just, uh, just to understand the, the, the domain. Then I will focus on how uh, we have designed the DSL 
or finally done method on the principle on how we have used proto to implement that data. Then I will finally uh, show you application, how we can write application uh, with uh, our DSL. So the context, uh, we, uh, we are a public uh, institute and we receive a part of the money from the state and we should uh, work on environment thematic because we are public. So uh, one, uh, one of uh, I, uh, our subject is CO2 storage. So CO2 storage is to, uh, to uh, capture CO2 at uh, the out of plants, things like that and put it in the ground and uh, we have to prove that uh, we can, uh, there are no links of CO2 during 1,000 years at least. So we have to check how uh, the ground reacts with the CO2 and if uh, that create clings and uh, prove that uh, a good candidate to uh, store uh, CO2, uh, there is no uh, effect on environment during 1,000 years. So we, 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 we make some software for such things. Um, we deal with various physical models, basin modeling, reservoir modeling, well modeling, active transport model, chemistry, geomechanics. And we use various numerical methods, finite volume, finite element methods, linear solver, coupling splitting methods, space time stepping, very complex things. So in fact, we have de to deal with increasing complexity and more and more physician one more complex things more detail more details and we have to make software efficient and um, software and in general want a run in the night we leave the laborator uh, laboratory make a run and the day after we need the results so we have to deal with new uh, hardware technology to an efficient software so uh, in my department, we have to deal with the, uh, uh, how to manage the complexity in computer science. We have different kind of complexity. We have algebraic complex complexity, numerical complexity, models complexity, computer science complexity. And usually when we work with mathematicians and physicians, they express their complexity, they better express their complexity with high level language. While we work with a computer science engineer to make to have performance, and we make a, a linear solver, and we need performance, and all that complexity uh, to get that performance, we have to use low-level language, and C++. But now we have to deal with CUDA and things like that. So our department have to provide software with uh, talking with all these people. And it's a very a big challenge for us. So, generative, the generative paradigm is uh, very important for us. It helps us to distribute and partition the complexity between developer that, uh, of computer science and algebraic that want to deal with low level language and end user, our end user is mathematician, physician. Who want to express their, uh, their, their problem with high level language. So, how, what is a domain specific language? It's a programming of specific language dedicated to a particular domain and uh, to express problem. And embedded, that's it, uh, that means that we integrate it in a host language, which can be Python, Ruby, or C. So uh, the, uh, parad uh, the generative par padding uh, consists in express a problem in a domain with a high level language to, uh, to generate the low level code uh, that, uh, that we, we need to use to have good performance. So the state, the state of art when I start my, uh, my work there is already frameworks to manage parallelism with mesh linear solvers. So Arcan is one a proprietary framework. There is Dune, uh, a Dune uh, open source framework, Trilinear Spaces. And there is some frameworks for finite element or organic methods based on an existing unified formalism. Uh, 
like uh, with DSL solution. So if and plus plus things using Python or uh, our DSL solution, fill plus plus sonance using C plus plus. So, but uh, <coughs> in um, in GeoScience, we use uh, we often use finite volume methods, and as Still, five years ago, there didn't exist a unif uh, uh, um, unified formalism to express to express finite volume method. Each mathematician had his own way to express this volume, and it was difficult to, uh, to design a, a specific language. But five years ago, there was different work at uh, succeeding unified this kind of methods and extending the finite element uh, uh, formalism. And we decide to to try to extend the finite element formalism to lower order methods to use the same way to express problem and solve them. So I will try to explain you quickly what is the, the, the mathematical background, just to explain the, the expression we will use. So. Uh, the framework is based on uh, uh, the variational formulation of problem. So, I remember we try to solve partial derivative equation, and uh, the variational formulation consists in designing uh, we call functional space. So, uh, a trial space it's uh, the space where we try you we try to find a solution. And a uh, test space is uh, a kind of collection of base function. So uh, the solution of a problem is um, the one who, for every uh, element of the test space, we have equality. Uh, uh, we have um, the equality of a uh, bilinear form A H to a linear form B H. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, in mechanics we say that it's uh, the var variational uh, solution. Is we have equilibrium if uh, for every uh, elementary displacement we still have the equilibrium. It's so in mathematical the, uh, the formulation is in the same way. We try to find um, uh, a solution U H if for all V H we have the equality uh, A H U H V H equal V H V H. V, VH. AH is a bilinear form and VH are linear forms. So for example, the classical example is a Poisson problem. So we have a continu continuous settings and people uh, uh, make uh, the weak formulation is to find, to define uh, a kind of energy forms integrate on all the mesh, all the domain uh, gradient of UH, gradient of VH. And we have to have the, this kind of equality. So the key ingredient to design a functional space is um, the mesh uh, discretizing the domain. Space of degree of freedom, it's uh, the vector of uh, uh, unknown, in fact. So uh, 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 the, say it's uh, that represents in the algebraic query the, the solution we try to find. And, uh, And a uh, uh, op uh, gradient reconstruction operator. It's a kind of linear operator that, uh, uh, in function of the degree of freedom, um, uh, uh, help to compute uh, the gradient of the function. So, just to remember what is a mesh, what is uh, uh, quite uh, well known, it's a, a mesh is a, a set of cells. And faces, so cells and faces, representing the domain on which we try to solve the, the partial equa equation derivative. And we need the, the concept of sub mesh. That means for a mesh, we can divide the mesh in a sub mesh. So we have three kind of sub mesh: uh, sub mesh regarding the face, or we can have sub mesh regarding nodes. Or we can have the identity, the submesh is the mesh. The submesh, the, the subset is the cell. 
So the space of degree of freedom, the idea is to, to have a vector but index it by an um, element of the mesh. So the space of degree of freedom is, for example, if you we run unknowns on each center of cells, we have uh, a vector that index it by uh, cells. Or we can run, we can run uh, unknowns on faces, so we have uh, a vector indexed by faces. So we call cell center space degree of freedoms. So uh, we, uh, we, we look for only unknown on cells, but we have hybrid space using both uh, unknown on face and unknown on cells. So the idea is that uh, degree of freedom are indexed by element of uh, the meshes. So after, to, uh, to build a space, uh, the idea is to, to uh, define uh, an operation for a given element of the degree of freedom, we try to build a piecewise constant function on the submesh. That means it's a function that uh, piece, uh, piecewise affine affine function on each submesh. So uh, the, uh, regarding the, uh, the, uh, the type of degree of freedom, we have different kind of methods. And to, to build the function, the idea is to take the value of the function on the center of the, the cells and add the gradient dot x minus uh, the center of the cells. So it's this way we define a, a piecewise affine function on each element of the submesh. So, uh, so with this in region that we give to a mathematician, we can uh, build every kind of functional space we want. We don't, uh, we don't mind. We just build uh, a kind of uh, function, uh, functional space. So I, I will quickly show you different kind of uh, 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 region recon reconstruction operator. So the G method is based on, we take a pyramidal sub mesh. So a um, sub mesh is uh, uh, based on nodes and faces. And for, for example, to build the gradient here, we use the unknown on uh, the free unknown on the so, uh, neighbor cells. And we can uh, build a uh, you know, uh, affine uh, uh, constant gradient on this, uh, on this uh, element. The CCG method is based on um, it's an, another kind of uh, uh, reconstruction. We build a trace operator that with unknown, we compute the value of the function on face, and with all these values, we, we try to compute a gradient on all the cells. And uh, there is a hybrid method. At, uh, it's, uh, we use both uh, cell, uh, unknown on uh, cells and faces. But uh, that's all for the map. I will try now to uh, explain you how we can build uh, a domain-specific language for such method. So what is uh, the, uh, the main ingredient to design the DSL? We have four ingredients. We have to use metaprogramming, that's it, to write programs that transfer types at compiled time. Generic programming, so it's considered designing generic components composed of abstract programs with generic types. Then the generative programming consists in generic concrete programs, that is, a program that runs transform transforming types to create concrete types and to use abstract program of generic commons. And then the fourth ingredient, and uh, the more one of the most important is. The expression template is to express a true representation of the problem and to have the tools, the framework, the tool to describe the, the tree, to parse the tool, and to evaluate the tree. So, writing a software consists is designing the problem, express the problem with a tree. Then, at compile time, we have tools to parse the tree and uh, to, for each node of the tree to analyze the, the types, 
to transform the types and to take in the collection of uh, generic components, to take the right components and put them together to build a real program. That is generative programming. Then the real program can be executed. And in the execution, there will also pass the tree to run the algorithm. So to design a, a, a domain-specific language, we have first to design the domain language. So to, to, uh, to choose the front ends, that is the, the, the structures that the, the end user will use. In our case, it's function space, test and trial function, discrete variant. The back, the back end is a, the, the structure that we will use to write a real algorithm and make, and we have performance. So it's a space of doors, they are combination, it's kind of vector indexed by uh, mesh elements, matrix vectors. And the language, it's the glue between these structures. That is, to define linear, uh, linear forms with operators predefined uh, function keyword, the keyword of the language, and make an expression with these structures. But the purpose is to define linear bilinear form representing the discrete formulation of the problem. Then, to solve the problem, ev evaluating this expression. Now, to, to, uh, to make that design, <coughs> we have used uh, the, the standard tools of the uh, so Bruce Proto, the library, he designed the DSI. MPL, Fusion, for the meta programming. For the generic programming, we use standard C++. It's a kind of template programming. We just write an abstract program algorithm with a template. Then we base our work on Arcan, the framework, providing mesh structures, network, audio service, postcard, and everything. And external libraries uh, for mesh linear servers. That is, that is the reason why we, are, we have embedded our language in C++. Because in C++, we can have access. We have an uh, ecosystem for every existing libraries, Fortran, CUDA, C++ libraries. And we can reuse all that libraries. And the compiler is a, a very powerful tool. The compiler can give you a lot of tools to make uh, many things. So we don't have to support all the two for the, the generative framework. So, so the front end is a structure that uh, end user use. We have to see that in front of the front end, we have the back end with low level structures. So the user uses the concept of mesh. In fact, we have arcane mesh structures. It's a real structure. Function space. In fact, we use algebraic space. It's a kind of collection of vector. Test and trial function, it's a real vectors. The bilinear forms are uh, usually is represented by a matrix, mm. linear forms by a vector. And, uh, uh, and region, class operator, it's a collection of linear combination. So when the user expresses his problem using keywords and bilinear uh, operators, he defines problems. Then, at the compile time, we generate the glue that we call an in, um, instantiated algorithm, where there is loops, evaluation, and uh, we, uh, in, vin in these loops, we create a real linear system that we will solve. So at the evaluation, when you run the programs, these algorithms are called, and matrix vector are built and solved to, uh, to find the solution. So to, uh, to explain how it works with Woods Proto, I will take a standard example, the example for the Poisson problem. We have the expression of the bilinear form is integrate on all the cells of the mesh, the, the uh, scalar product of key it's a tensor, a 
uh, multiplied by gra the gradient of uh, u, it's a, a trial function, and the gradient of v, the test function. This is the expression, and this is an expression that every mathematician understands. Proto helps you to design a tree representing this expression. So it's a node associated to a, a tag T integrate. So we have a B, uh, uh, B, B function integrate that creates two, two edge of the tree. All cells is uh, uh, the collection of cells of the mesh. And in this, this expression, we have a binary expression, uh, uh, Binary expression dot to associate to the keyword dot, then uh, uh, a left expression, a right expression, and we can analyze the left expression. It's key times grad u, so it's a multiplication between key and the gradient of u, and we can analyze the right expression. So this is the representation of the problem, and in fact, when you write by hand your program, the mathe mathematician wants just to loop, make a loop on a, a loop on the element of the, the mesh, take the mesh measure of the cell and evaluate this expression. So uh, evaluate the, the, the left, the try expression the try expression is a column. The test expression is a line. So this product makes you a local matrix that you want to assemble in a big matrix. That is, that all mathematicians do every day on copy pass, copy pass, copy pass for all the programs. So you can write it once with uh, abstract uh, uh, types. So you don't add. Once you have debugged it once, it works for every time to in instantiate that loop. So the idea is how analyzing this expression and instantiate this real algorithm you want to run. And I will show you how we boost photo we can uh, create such tree and how, at the compile time, we make the link with an instantiation of that algorithm. So uh, first, a photo give you some tools to, to create your domain. So to create your domain, you have to define a structure for expression. You say your, uh, your expression, uh, you have expression. You have to uh, tell a grammar that, uh, that check uh, uh, if your expression is a terminal or uh, a function of nodes created with, uh, uh, with, with this terminal. Then you declare your domain and that generates expression of the domain and that conform the grammar. Then your expression, to generate expression, you have uh, such uh, kind of things. And uh, uh, I had that uh, because we use uh, uh, the assignment operator. But it's just, it's, uh, just uh, you, uh, when you read your tutorial, you understand that you have to define your domain to encapsulate all expression and to check that your expression is in your domain and is conform to your grammar. This is what allows you to have multiple domains in an application and yes. get them confused. Yes, because I, I will show you that uh, we will have to use different domains. But that when you focus on one domain, it's a, a way to, to protect your domain. Question. Um, that grammar matches every possible proto-expression. Yes. OK. <laughs> it's a simple grammar, just copy past tut uh, proto tutorial, make it. Okay. And uh, just uh, uh, to be able to write uh, strange things, write expression, and it's compiled, it's work. You don't do nothing, just writing expression. Yep. Then 
uh, but to define your uh, uh, your language, you have first to design to choose what is your terminals. So you have a meta function saying, "Ah, oh, this is function, this is basic, this is mesh, mesh uh, variable, mesh groups," and you say that your terminal will will be such structures. So after you have detecting your terminal, you, know, you don't bother uh, about one, just uh, overload all, all operators. To it's just the way to create expression with um, a C plus plus operators. So, so once you have terminal on uh, expression with operator, C plus plus operator uh, isn't sufficient for your language. You want to des design other uh, operators. So we call keywords. We want to create keywords. And that is a way to create function, to create function associated to tags. So we, uh, we start declare our own tags. For example, t drive and t dot. We want to, and with these tags, we create two functions just creating nodes with associated with it tag and uh, referencing other elements. So that it's a node with uh, uh, associated to TGAL and with, uh, um, and, uh, with um, another, uh, another type Q. And dot is a binary, binary uh, operator uh, taking a left expression or right expression. It's a node associated to T dot and uh, the left expression, right expression. And so uh, Proto gives you an easy way to create the nodes you want, the function you, you note. Then after, you, you, you can have more complex expression with C++ operator, but with your own operator. So uh, once you have your expression, you want to print it. So uh, Proto, you want just to print the nodes to see what the, the, how it looks like. So Proto gives you tools to parse and, and prospect your expression. So display expression, to take, you have a, bin, a binary expression. You want to take the right expression, the, uh, the left expression, for example, or the type of the, uh, the right expression, the left expression. So there is a lot of tools already existing. I don't need to rewrite them by myself. So once you have expression, you want to define, to, to design a language, it's important to speak with your end user and to tell that you need a strict language, a rigorous language. And the best way to define a language is to write its ABNF grammar definition. And when you talk with mathematicians, they are very rigorous. And you can try to write the BNF grammar definition. It's a way to, to say, I won't do everything, but tell me what you want me to do. So with the mathematician, we start uh, defining what is a linear operator. So gradient, jump, I will explain you. Jump, it's uh, the, the value uh, between uh, uh, one face the back face, the back cell and the front cell, the difference of the back cell and front cell, average is the average of the value between, uh, between the back cell and front cell. So what is a text expression? So uh, a, text, uh, a trial expression, it's a trial function, or uh, the coefficient, uh, a factor times uh, a trial function, or uh, maybe the, product, the uh, scalar product of a factor with a trial function or a linear operator. So we design, let's see the text expression, but a trial expression, a text expression. So a bilinear term, it's uh, the product between a trial expression and text expression, etc., or the sum of two bilinear terms or the product of a coefficient times the bilinear term. This is a work we can do on paper with mathematicians. Once you have written, it, it is not my job to write this, uh, this definition. It's uh, the end user that have to write 
is uh, is the language. Then after I have to translate it in C++ structure, and Boost Proto provide you a declarative way to express this grammar. So when you you understand how it works, it's very easy. So we just say that we define what is a test expression grammar, a try expression grammar, and we just say a plus bilinear grammar. It's a proto plus linear grammar, linear grammar. A mut bilinear grammar. It's a coefficient grammar, bilinear grammar. Or on your grammar, final grammar, it's a try a try expression grammar times a text expression grammar. Or your own operator by a try expression grammar, text expression grammar, and the plus linear. So it's a quite one for uh, one, for, uh, for one. You just translate the UBNF definition in C++ structure. So Proto already provides you standard meta function, so uh, plus, minus, root. But in your specific domain, you run other operator. So we have our own keyword. So integrate, flag, jump, average, dot, different uh, NIT. So we have our own tags, and we have write our meta function. So to write our meta function, I just look in Proto to understand how they write a Proto meta function. So I didn't understand. I just write it. <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a much easier way. I'll tell you later. Uh, yeah. So the fact is, you want to uh, you understand that how Proto writes, so you can extend Proto with your own keywords. Uh, so after you have your meta function, you want to de uh, detect uh, your own pattern. You want to detect a great grammar. You want to detect if an expression have e associated to the uh, the, uh, the tag t grad. Um, so you, there is a way to design your own grammar. For, for, for example, for the tag t grad, we have uh, uh, make a meta function to detect expression with tag t grad. We have a grammar to match expression, uh, uh, three expression under the, the, the not t grad. And, uh, so once we have understood that for bright, for jump, for dot, and we know that we will have to extend the uh, our language, so you just write uh, macro yeah. as uh, proto defined macro for overloaded all operator. So we have designed our own macro to make a unary function, binary function and define the grammar, things like that. So after uh, we have expression, we can parse them, introspect them, match expression, uh, check uh, grammar. We want to, uh, uh, in the, we have to, uh, to uh, understand the generative way. We want to make real things. So we want to evaluate the expression on uh, uh, apply real algorithm. So, Proto provide two <coughs> two way of uh, impl implementing algorithm. So, context object expression evaluation and transform object. So, the more easy to understand is context object expression evaluation. So, we have an expression. We just want to evaluate with a context, and in fact, the algorithm is written in the context. So in fact, when we want to evaluate this expression, we, know we want a linear combination. It's a vector of uh, value indexed by uh, uh, some, uh, some element of the mesh. So we have an eval context on cell, and we can evaluate this expression, the expression, and we recover the line and the column of the matrix. And the, the, the way to, to, uh, to recover this uh, um, the vector of the colors is written in uh, the operator of uh, eval context that call, in fact, uh, in the space, in the right 
the right uh, uh, function that gives you uh, what you want. So it's uh, the, the third thing you, uh, we do just to, to, to uh, call an uh, algorithm on the node of the tree. Then after, to make a, 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 a very compli a more complicated algorithm, it's to call a loop, a real loop, with uh, the good loop, we are a proto pro value transform object. It's kind of grammar object that match expression and uh, enable you to call specific algorithm. So, so you're treating all the nodes as scalars, is that right? So like a, like a velocity would be a UVW or something? Uh, uh, we, we, we deal with a scalar, but uh, I will show you vector expressions too. Okay. okay I, will, I, I, uh, I will show you later. So uh, what is a transform? So we have designed the grammar. In fact, the, the transform object, uh, if, uh, we want to integrate. Makes integrate on all the mesh dot gradually, gradually. So the transform object, it's a kind of object that match, match our grammar. That's why we have def defined all kind of grammar to match expression. So with, when we, we want to integrate with uh, a linear expression, so we want to, if, when, it's a multiplication between a trial expression, a test expression, just call that. If it's a, uh, the a scalar product between a trial function, test function, just call that. And here, we have, we can say on the node you are analyzing, take the left, left expression, take the right expression, and we have the state and con uh, the data state. It's a, uh, the, for us, it's a value where we accumulate the, uh, uh, the value of that on each cell. On uh, data, we pass the context. That's it, the way we evaluate this expression. Because this expression, the same expression, we can evaluate in different ways. We can just evaluate to fill the matrix, or just evaluate to get uh, the, the accumulative value of the expression. So uh, the context of evaluation, you, you just pass it with that. So now, what is, what is that? This, this is also a transform, but a callable transform, where we call, we implement the real algorithm. So in multi-integrator, it's in this uh, transform that we call the algorithm I showed you before, where the real loop. <coughs> this, in the transform, we call this loop and instantiate it with the real type of the test expression, prior expression, because at compile time, passing the expression, we know the type. The compiler, the compiler knows the type, and we can instantiate the real algorithm, and it we call in the, in the transform. So uh, that's the way transform object. That's the way we can match every kind of expression of our grammar, or, or uh, for each case, we just call the right transform that instantiates the good algorithm that is already written, but with abstract types. So here in the code, that is how we call this transform and apply it on such expression with a, a, a kind of context. So we mix context evaluation and transform. So now, I will show you uh, finally uh, how uh, in uh, the ap application of such DSL. So I will s first show you for uh, a simple academic problems. So the diffusion problems. It's a typical the equation that we have to solve to compute the dynamic, the fluid dynamics in the, the ground. So we have this equation that um, to solve. And mathematicians have a lot of method 
to solve this problem. So there is a G method, CCG method, and ID method. And for each method, they write it by hand on 500 line to implement a method. And finally, we have a, a, a framework to write these methods in the same framework and compile them and make some conversion tests and things like that. So the first method. So the mathematician thinks, write papers, and finally say that this is the binary form we have to implement. It's the sum of all the faces, the integration of each faces, of the, the average of the gradient, uh, 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 the, the scalar product of the normal of the faces with the average of the gradient times the jump of the test function. So this is mathematical language. There, it's their language, we understand that, and uh, they write paper, and uh, finally, we have a definition. So to implement that, we just, with our data set, tell the same thing. So we have a mesh, we create a G space, we create a PZO space, it's a, 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 constant, a piecewise constant function uh, space. We take a try function and test function, so try function, test function, and we design the bilinear form as we write. We integrate on all faces of the mesh, so uh, the scalar product of the normal of the of normal of the face time uh, with the uh, average of the gradient of uh, times. times jump of V. So the same for the, the linear forms. It's integrated on all the cell of the mesh of F times V. So it's... So how do you choose the gradient reconstruction? So it's, uh, the gradient is uh, linked with the space. Each space is designed of a kind of gradient reconstruction. Okay. Okay. Where is the sum happening? So integrate. integrate. The keyword that oh. means it's integrate, but there is a, the measure of the element times the expression. Okay. So it's just a matter of translating the mathematical formula into C++ as close as possible. And debugging consists is verifying that you are written the, the good formula. So you have a like a, a, a separate integrate implementation for the case of a dot product compared to yes. And in fact, in is fact, that like a performance choice? Like, a, is that an efficiency thing? Like, because uh, so there's no intermediates or uh, for the we can manage. You can have dots or times. We have. I will show you other expression. So mm -hmm. we can uh, when you have a scalar product on vector. Or a fixed dimension one has some, some, some generic forms. Some, uh, yes, some uh, optimization you can do, but uh, I will but I will show you various various way of uh, expre uh, expressing the same thing. So the CCG method a bit more complicated. So uh, it's a CCG space. So on uh, the expression a bit more complicated, but it's always uh, integration of element of the mesh and uh, expression. And we can, we have test expression, try expression, and uh, uh, different kind of uh, test expression can be more uh, uh, complicated or not. But in fact, we have to just to translate without understanding the expression. We just translate that into C++. So we take a CCG space, File, file function, test function, and design a binary form to um, translate that. So this form is with jump, this is jump, this is average, and some products, uh, uh, scalar product between uh, normal and, and uh, things. So uh, the hybrid method, so uh, the expression is uh, more easy. 
So just write the hybrid method. Then after, we can compare the methods, make some convergent results to see uh, it's, uh, the, we have the good solution. And we can have performance results of the methods. So we have com uh, compared with a uh, handwritten method. In fact, the G method, we can write it by hand with a standard. We have a standard unwritten method. But, uh, so uh, to check the override of the language. Because, in fact, <coughs> the performance is, is in the loop. And the loop uh, is written by hand. Not the, uh, in fact, the same loop. Uh, you are just to check that before calling the loop, we are no, not over. For So for simple expression, we have quite the same performance. Uh, there is some difference, but uh, uh, um, uh, uh, but uh, we have the same performance. For this method, we, we have the, the, as uh, the time to assemble. It's quite um, important uh, because the expression is very more complicated. But uh, um, I have some comparison with uh, handwritten codes, but written in 2D. So that's why I don't I show here, because the handwritten code was only written in 2D, while our framework is in every dimension. So uh, I, uh, I've compared with the 2D, uh, on the 2D case, the handwritten code. And we have some, uh, we are, uh, uh, the performance are not as good as the uh, unwritten code because there is in the expression there is simplification that you can easily done by uh, by hand. But uh, we should introduce uh, cache uh, uh, to avoid uh, to uh, evaluate the same expression uh, uh, several times. So we have to work on it just to uh, to make some op optimization while evaluate, uh, evaluate in the expression to have the same performance than the handwritten codes. So I will show you other example, more complicated example. And each time, uh, we have to extend the language. So if we, this example is a uh, um, uh, um, synthetic example to uh, study injection of CO2. It's a domain where there is some impermeable uh, barrier on uh, uh, CO2 bubble, and we inject some CO2 there, uh, in, in, uh, there and there, and we see how uh, the fluid go through uh, this domain. So uh, the fact we need to, uh, to deal with new constraints, the boundary condition. So I didn't talk about boundary condition before. Now we need to deal with boundary condition. So we have to extend the language. So to extend the language, we work with the mathematician and we decide to add new keywords on, on a group of uh, elements of the mesh. We have to add constraint expression. And we have to also to uh, to add a keyword to recover the, the degree of freedom of uh, an expression on so on kind of match. So to uh, to deal with the replay condition, we have to add on the boundary condition on the boundary phase. We want that the degree of freedom equal g, and then when we make that degree of freedom equal g, we have to suppress line and column in the matrix and uh, put directly the value on the degree of freedom. So when you go back to the framework, we have to design new type t on t trace, define new function on the meta function, the grammar, the trust meta function grammar. So to extend the language, we just had that. This is for the expression. Then after, you have to, in the transform, to match. If you match uh, on grammar, then you call the right algorithm that add a surprise line and uh, uh, give
is the value of the degree of freedom. It's just a matter of adding some key, uh, some tags, defining new nodes, new function to create nodes, and uh, having the transforms. When you match that part of the expression, just call this kind of algorithm. So when we, we match this expression, so on all the faces of that collection of faces, we have an expression. This is the as sign, this is from proto, this expression G. And when we match that, we know that for, for all the faces, we take the degree of freedom, surprise so align the matrix, circle so the matrix, and put G on, on the value of the solution U. So um, this is uh, the problem when you can see the, di uh, the Bonari condition, directly di Bonari condition, Neumann Bonari condition, and we have the result. So we try to make another more complicated problem. So the stats problem. The stats problem, we are in uh, three uh, uh, dimension D, and we have to deal with vector solution. U is not a, a scalar solution, but a vector uh, solution on each dimension. So we have, and we have to deal with different kind of, of, uh, of uh, test function. We have U and the pressure, P. So U is the velocity, and, uh, and P is uh, the pressure. So the mathematician work on design their linear form introducing this expression and such expression and the bilinear form is composed on two bilinear form. So we, ha we need vectorial ex expression not to, uh, we have to detect vectorial terminals we have to introduce range and index terminal and a uh, new keyword, sum, to iterate on the index. When you iterate on the dimension, so you iterate on the dimension, and you have a scalar view of the terminal. So, so when we look at, we have uh, two index, uh, i and j, the expression. It's just the sum on i as the expression, where u and v are vectorial. So we have, we run the component e of u, the component i of v, or maybe we can write it in the same way. This is the same expression. We want to iterate on i and g and take the, the component of the gradient on g. So we had, we had uh, this keyword which take the component of the gradient on G times, so we can write it in the same way. But in fact, when for, for performance reason, you see that uh, this expression is more efficient because we just uh, work with vector expression. And then while, uh, while the, in this expression, we, we separate the evaluation. But in the same way to express the problem. So, we have the keyword uh, divergence, you can write it like that too. So, uh, can you, I'm sorry, can you back up one slide? So, like this is what I was quite, so usually here you would use either like a compatible space, like a Q2, P0, Q1, P0. Yes, we have a. So the spaces are different in that yes, sense? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So for P, we use a piecewise constant function. For you, uh, um, on another space. Oh, okay, I see. So, in our framework, we add new tags for new expression. We define the new nodes, the functions, the grammar, things like that. And if we, we have a new linear expression, so now we integrate on all cells, but we had that is a subscript. The, the expression is subscript of the sum, the sum expression 
that iterate on uh, the index, and the other expression, this expression. And this expression, we have, under gradient, we have a view of uh, a vectorial expression with associated to uh, the index. So after, in the transform, we just had the fact that we need to iterate on the index and apply the algorithm on uh, this expression. But instead of uh, applying directly on u, we are applying with the value of the index. So the stocks problem is quite more complicated. But in fact, with uh, the, the, the expression, it's just a mathematician, they have to write it. So we only need to check that we write the same expression. But the set, uh, but we could, uh, all the framework is already provided on the expression, the way to express. So we just write and have the solution. So we can see that it's a uh, 20 lines, while writing by hand, it's a, uh, I don't know how many lines you wow. need to, to, to write it. So the final um, uh, test uh, case, it's a, a more complicated test, but an interesting one to see the benefit for the low level services. In fact, it's a, we call it multi-scale pressure solver. So multi-scale method consists of using two level mesh. Uh, thin mesh and coarse mesh. So to solve the thin problem, the thin problem is a standard of problems. We we use a coarse mesh, and on each face of the coarse mesh, we define we say basis function using the thin mesh. The basis function is also a partial derivative equation with uh, uh, with a weight function that that take the value of the permeability on the thin mesh. So once we have the base function on each face, we want to find a core solution using the value of the base function. So you just write the, the coarse mesh, the coarse space, the uh, hybrid multi-scale mesh, is to find solution as this wise function of the coarse cells plus the value of the basis function. And this basis function are not piecewise function, piecewise fun function, uh, constant function, but real solution of a problem on the thin mesh. So, so the mathematician design say to, uh, to build a basis function, you have to solve that. So we know that we can solve that. It's easy. The cost problem, we have to solve that. It's the same kind of expression. We have just, we need just to, maybe to make some things more complicated to compute that using the value of the basis function. But the, we know that the framework should be uh, extended to, to deal with such expression. When once you have the cost solution, the thin solution, the velocity, is just to uh, downscale the solution on the thin solution, on the thin mesh. So, so we have extended with a new keyword downscale. We have designed a new multi-scale multi space where when you evaluate such kind of uh, scalar product, we make the scalar product of the real basis function. In, and the scalar product of the uh, basis function is the evaluation I show you in the transform. It's the value of integrate of that with two real functions. So we can compute the element of the matrix and assemble the coarse matrix, solve the coarse matrix, then downscale the solution. Why the example is interesting? So should, should that be? So like in your first or uh, second integrate call, you, there's a, you reference, one? yeah, no, you reference th. So th is, here it's a multi-scale switch. That's the core switch. The, the, the score, the so core mesh. 
these expressions are gospel and That's these the on so the then graph. Below, should it be on UH? Hmm? It's on, so UH is the fine space? No, no, UH here, uh, it's a, it's a multi-scale space. It's a space based on basis function. In fact, we uh, have this space, uh, the, the degree of freedom, the velocity are associated to basis function. Okay, so, so there's one mesh. There is a thin mesh, we build a coarse mesh. On the uh, coarse mesh, we, are, we create basis function on each coarse basis. Yeah, yeah. Then, I see what you're saying. So uh, then the, the degree of freedom are associated to coarse element. So why this example is <coughs> interesting? Because in such problem, many computations are independent. Each basis, com basis computation, ascending computation, dark scaling computation are little problems, independent little problem. So we can optimize such code using GPU, multi-core parallelism, multi node parallelism. There is a lot of way of adding performance on such problems. And using the, DSR, the domain specific language separates the numerical level from the back end level. So our optimization at the low level doesn't affect the, f the numerical formulation of the problem. And then evaluating the problem, we can use GPU to, co to compute all the basis function and make compute the elements of the matrix. We can use multi-core parallelism with TBB when uh, we, have, uh, we have access to multi-core problem. Or we have many optimizations that are, are done at the low level without changing the formulation of the problem. So in that sense, like for shared memory, like on a GPU or even on a you know, shared memory CPU, are you you relying on like Arcane to provide a thread safe so, assembly routine? So uh, like Arcane provide, uh, uh, in fact, uh, we have the expression. And when we evaluate the expression with a kind of context, in, within the context, we can add information of the hardware. So add that uh, if you want to multi core program or use GPU, or we have uh, static information that is uh, taken into account in compile time, or dynamic information. Just now, we have the, a number of GPU available, and a number of not available, and we want to use share memory uh, 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 parallelism of GPU. So you're using like coloring or something like that? To yes, see. yes, so we, we can. Okay, okay. Here. So that way they write in a serial mindset. Yes, exactly. And you rely on coloring. And then uh, uh, evaluating the expression, we can detect all these uh, basis function. Some are, we can color them to have different kind of parallelism. And uh, we can just make a stream and put all everything on the GPU and recover the solution. And uh, when you downscale the solution, you can downscale take, uh, taking account that uh, uh, you, you, you cannot take uh, uh, assembly uh, two basis function that share the right. cell. So you just take care of that. But this is done at a low level. Okay. And uh, mathematicians don't care about such things. And we can change the backhand easily without in, uh, 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 being intrusive to uh, the uh, high level uh, definition of the problem. So the, the solution, huh? so you can see our 1D problem. This is a basis function. This is a, a linear solution. For homogeneous case, for heterogeneous case, this is a basis function. And we can uh, compare the thin solution to the coarse solution. For a 2D problem with uh, a perma uh, permeability field, uh, heterogeneous permeability field, we have the multi-scale solution. And you can see the effect of the coarse 
the course uh, uh, mesh. This is the thin solution when you just write it on the thin mesh. And this is the error between these two solutions. So, uh, to conclude, so we have a new DHL for lowest order methods uh, that didn't exist before because uh, uh, of the lack of uh, formalism. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was existing for finite element method, but not for finite volume method. So, we can recover various finite volume method that the mathematician well known. So, we can implement non trivial academic test case. And, uh, and we have checked the performances through language overhead, and benchmark with, and written, and we know where we have to work to get uh, good performance. And we, are co conf conf we have confidence to, to be close to the unwritten codes that uh, uh, will improve the productivity to write such codes. So, the benefit of Boost Proto framework, productivity for the developer. It's a DSL to design DSL. We have a lot of usual generic tools. And when we try, when I try to write them, sometimes it's very complicated. Or uh, they are already done in Proto. So and when you write a simple language, it's easy. But when you start to write a real language for a real domain, you have to, uh, you have a simple example is we have to uh, copy expression and take care that some are reference, some uh, cannot be copied. We have big vector. We have to check when you copy an expression that uh, vector are not copied and things like that. So when you start to deal with such problems, uh, it's uh, more easy to use direct in photo. So enable to d design easy complex DSL. And the DSL can be easily expanded. So you cannot, the first, you start, you just design a simple DSL for simple problems. Then quickly, when you see that it's very uh, uh, interesting, you want to make more complicated problems. And my business is to make real software for real, in the real world. So we have to have complicated expression. So you want to extend the DSL quickly. So uh, we have to, to, um, to design a DSL factory, a way to extend the language quickly. So, uh, because um, uh, when you read the proto source, it's quite complicated, and you don't want already to, also to understand everything. But just create, uh, extend your language. Um, so, try to factorize, you know, a kind of declaration, the same declaration to extend your language. And so, it's a way to extend proto standard tools. Proto provides you standard tools, but they are general. But when you write a specific code, you want to add your own function or your own things. So you just, as Proto do, extend uh, the standard tools of Proto. So there is a productive for end user. To write things, once he's, uh, he, he have confidence, confidence in the DSL, and uh, you want to uh, quickly to write new numerical methods and new complex method. So uh, uh, writing these methods, they, their concerns are in the method, not in the uh, performance issue. So we have two separate, two teams working together, but we have um, uh, computer science specialists working off GPU, parallelism, and things like that. And we have mathematicians and numeration. We want them to talk together but to work independent. And it's an uh, uh, easy way to separate concern and to provide performance to a mathematician in an easy way without rewriting all the codes because uh, there is a new feature and new things. So perspective. So uh, we want to extend the DSL for new things. Take into account non-linearity because I show you only uh, linear problems, but there is a way to take into account non-linearity and uh, make more complicated things. So we work with uh, HAM project. It's a, a, f f um, fa uh, 
uh, projects in France for multi-scale method on hybrid architecture. It's uh, the way of uh, using hybrid architecture for such method which provide many, many independent problems. So we are working with that. And we have to uh, check, uh, check for new business applications. So linear elasticity, core mechanic, and new, new, new uh, application for uh, software. So that links. So uh, most of and some uh, <coughs> some projects uh, are working in the same way. There is a June project. It's a kind of uh, using the same way of uh, developing software. The Phoenix project and Field Plus Plus project. Thank you. Uh, So if you wanted to port this to a different framework, mesh instead of arcane, arcane's gone or whatever. Yes. It's really just the those implementations of like multiply as integrand or dot integrate. Or In fact, uh, I I could have, I should have separate the mesh concept. So just use a mesh concept, and uh, as soon as your framework provide uh, is conform to this concept. You could use it. I didn't have time to, to separate. I just have a mesh framework uh, with a lot of services. And it was a framework uh, starting in 2000, so uh, not written in the new way. So it was already available. My, my idea was to think about the DSL. Now, now I have understood the, the language layer. I think it's easy to take it and to plug with a mesh concept on to be an independent, or, or independent framework. But I should have, um, but that needs uh, the generic components. I should make the effort to separate the dependency to uh, the mesh um, framework. But uh, I think um, once you have understood how to write your DSL, it's very quick to, to design your DSL and to use um, uh, a good concept to think of your concept. And then after you can plug whatever component you want. But you have to think, you, have, you need a mesh component, a uh, uh, linear server component, way to, to iterate on component, way to iterate on vector, and uh, make the link between vector and the mesh. Because we need a, uh, our vector uh, can be uh, indexed either by integer or elements. That's all. Once you have this uh, this layer, you can just take your language and plug it to. And the June projects work in that way. They have very separate uh, uh, abstract interface. So it would be interesting to make such a work in the June project. But as a link with uh, the archive framework, that's it.